Ladies and gentlemen, good morning again. Last December, over 13 million North Americans watched the Christmas episode of the popular TV series Glee, when paraplegic student Artie stands up and walks with the help of an exoskeleton device he is wearing. Artie exclaims, it's called the rewalk. Some guy in Israel invented it. The guy in Israel who invented rewalk is Dr. Amit Gofield. Dr. Gof <laughs> Dr. Gofield is an inventor and entrepreneur and is a graduate of the Technion's Faculty of Electrical Engineering. But there are more connections. In 2001, when his rewalk prototype succeeded in enabling a small group of paralyzed persons to walk, Dr. Gofield joined Technion's high-tech incubator and established Argo Medical Technologies. Argo's team includes additional Technion graduates in leading positions. With us today is Oren Tamari, COO and graduate of physics. Oren? <laughs> Itai Levinson, operations manager who studied industrial engineering. <laughs> and also Asaf Tsioni, the technician who studied at the technical school on the Technion campus. Asaf. Finally joining us is Radi Kayouf, who we will meet in a moment, a paraplegic as a result of a war injury sustained while serving in the Israeli army. Radi will demonstrate rewalk. So without further ado, I hand things over to Dr. Amit Gofer. Good morning. I'm very happy to be here and present the rewalk. For me, it's, uh, well, a great feeling to introduce it here at home, I would say. Though I graduated uh, the Technion in 1975, I have a history through my children. My daughter is a student of this very faculty. My son is a graduate of this Technion as well. And my third uh, child in the army. So I got into this situation at following an injury in 1997. And I couldn't understand why the wheelchair is the only solution actually to people that are paralyzed. I couldn't grasp it. The wheelchair hasn't really uh, changed a lot uh, relative to other technologies. So here it is, the rewalk, which the purpose was to develop, and we succeeded, uh, a device that is not an assistive device. It's from morning to night, enabling most of the ambulation urbanic area like ascending stairs, slopes, and, and so on, driving everything. For a paraplegic person, I don't know if the wheelchair will disappear totally. I don't see any reason uh, to use the wheelchair for people uh, like Radi that you're going to see here. Radi is injured and uh, he is T8, complete paralyzed. People like him, I don't think will be really uh, be needing uh, the wheelchair whole day. I'll give explanations while Radi is using the device. But uh, before that, it's important to understand that the uh, walking uh, is kind of intuitive. The person uh, shouldn't think about uh, left or right or something like that. It actually uh, moves the person from a uh, wheelchair user status to a crutch user status. And all the person ha has to do, the user, is push the crutches forward then the whole structure, which is an exoskeleton, tilts also, bends also forward, and they've been sensed, and one step is being initiated. Then another step by another tilt. So just walking means just pushing the crutches. Suppose it doesn't want to push the crutches anymore, suppose the person wants to stop, then just stop uh, pushing the crutches. Before I let the uh, Radi to demonstrate, I would like to emphasize what's wrong with the wheelchair. I mean, being uh, grown up in a uh, height of a child is not a very nice thing, where your head is on a level of, uh, say it in Yiddish, the tuchas of people. <laughs> and so, I don't know, it's not very 
that's the dignity, self-esteem are, are the key points here. And I'm not sure that the regular population is aware about the self-esteem uh, issue here. Uh, when you see a person in a wheelchair, actually what you see is something like an iceberg. You see the tip of the iceberg. The person in a wheelchair, in order to survive, must stand an hour a day. And there are devices for that, like it's called the standard other devices. I mean, array of devices that are not necessary once you have the rework. So it will be also kind of saving the good for the, I would say, the, um, I mean, the medical insurance company will like the device because of that. The main issue here in saving the expenses are the rehospitalization. This is the main issue, which I'm talking about the U.S., the numbers are more familiar, for the spinal cord injured only, people like me, people like Radi, rehospitalization is about, it's more than 10 billion annually dollars, only rehospitalization. It's something between 10 and, and 13 billion dollars, a huge number. And uh, we think that uh, a rework will reduce it uh, even a third of it. You have to remember also that the number one problem and the killer among uh, people in a wheelchair is it the urinary tract pr uh, problem, and the second is pressure sores, and the device doesn't support uh, pressure sores. Uh, only wheelchair, or, or you have to sit down in order to have the ability, I mean, the mechanism of pressure sores, and so and so. So, my personal hope to see the wheelchair being pushed to the side and not the only uh, solution for that. I think now it's a good time to. Uh, start talking and doing some actions. Uh. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, wh what you saw that is stopped just by stopping pushing the crutches. Well, the device, you have motors, each motor contains its own microprocessor. On the back, you have batteries and uh, the main computer. And on, the, on his right uh, wrist, there is a wireless control that the, the person, um, Radi, can select the mode of operation. A lot of safety here. The tones of uh, layers of software are buried in this device. It's very important. From sitting to standing, something bad happens. Coordination so, the device knows how to sit back the person's, and then he can try again. So the structure, okay, let's go around and... Mm -hmm. Can you jump in there or something like that? <laughs> now, one thing is an important issue is that each stair will be acknowledged because oftentimes the stairs are not even and body should make sure that is fit well situated. And so this is why it's, it's not a robotic device. Now while he is using the, the stairs, he can't press the seat or something that uh, conflicts. The, there are icons on the control and the icon of the seat, uh, the sitting position disappears. I mean, while negotiating stairs. I'm trying to remember what questions I'm being often time asked. Okay, the batteries should be charged during night so it can go all day long. And the device is not carried by the person. So the user uh, doesn't feel the weight of the device and the, and the body of the user is being carried by the user, so it's very healthy. Shouldn't uh, learning how to use the device is somewhat how to, I mean, learn how to drive a car. And once you, you know the technique, you shouldn't be tired or even walking for hours. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know?